Dr. Carpenter, uh, at what level of exposure would you expect to see uh, some impact on the brain? Well, I said earlier that uh, the boundary between safe and unsafe is one molecule. Uh, I think that uh, any PCB that gets in the brain will act on these various mechanisms that I enumerated depending on where it goes. Uh, I, I can't tell you what concentration in the brain would cause clinically observable disease uh, because we really don't have that information in studies in humans, of course. But uh, PCBs in the brain are not a good thing at any level. At, at what levels have you seen effect? Well, let me ask this first. How does the brain compare to other organs in terms of its resiliency or resistance or robustness in the face of toxins? Well, as everyone probably knows, brain cells don't regenerate very much. Recently, we find that, yeah, there's a little bit of regeneration. But you can take out half of your liver and you'll grow your liver back. But that's not true for your brain cells. So if an environmental toxin kills a nerve cell, there's going to be a decrement right there. There is increasing evidence in studies of exposure of children to chemicals that cause reduction in IQ. Most of it's been done with lead. There's a little evidence with PCBs that a child exposed early on to a, a chemical that causes reduction in IQ never reaches the same cognitive potential that someone that's not exposed, which implies that some of these effects are irreversible. I think that evidence that that's true for PCBs is weaker than it's true for lead, but there's still evidence that makes it seem more likely than not that PCB neurotoxicity is an irreversible event from which there is not ever going to be total recovery. So at, at what levels in your research have you seen um, PCBs cause injury to other systems besides the brain? Your Honor, same objection. Overall. Thank you. I've done a, a number of studies where we look at rates at which people are hospitalized for various diseases in relation to their residence near to hazardous waste sites that contain PCBs. Now, in those studies, we found elevations in heart disease, in high blood pressure, in diabetes, in thyroid disease, increases of infections. Uh, including asthma, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now we had no direct measurements of the PCB levels in the blood of these people. So what we were doing was comparing people living near a PCB waste site as compared to people that don't live near a PCB waste site. And then we asked the question, what are the air levels? Because just because you live near a waste site doesn't mean you eat contaminated fish. So what are the air levels that are associated with these increases in disease? And what we find is that the air levels at maximum are four to six nanograms per cubic meter. Two orders of magnitude lower than those that are presumed to occur in Sky Valley. Now, that kind of study is called an ecologic study. And because we don't have individual data, it's a weak study. Therefore, we took those results for two diseases, high blood pressure and diabetes, two diseases most people don't think are related to environmental contamination in PCBs in particular. We looked at high blood pressure in residents of Anniston, Alabama that lived near the Monsanto plant that made most of these PCBs. This was a study funded by the US government, the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. So in those people, we had three measures of blood pressure. We had measurements of their serum PCB concentration. 
And what we found is that there was a direct relationship between PCB levels and high blood pressure. Then in our Native American population, we did the same experiments with diabetes. And to test that our observations from these ecologic studies without individual measurements of exposure, was that hypothesis correct? We found, yes, if you looked at total PCBs, there was an increase in the risk of diabetes. Then if we looked at the congener patterns in the blood samples of these people. Now these people live near uh, waste sites. Uh, well, the whole St. Lawrence River is a big waste site because there were three aluminum foundries that used PCBs as hydraulic fluids. When they leaked, they went into the river, contaminated the fish. There's been a lot of dredging and remediation going on there, but the soils are contaminated. The air is contaminated. We found that the strongest association with diabetes was with the lower chlorinated congeners. Even though they're not very persistent, but these people were breathing the air continuously. And uh, this then confirms the hypothesis that came from our studies where we didn't have good exposure assessment. So again, that's the basis for my conclusion that for hypertension and for diabetes, the strongest association was with the lower chlorinated congeners. Whereas for some of the other diseases and other studies we did both in Aniston and with our Native American population, elevations in cholesterol and triglycerides and obesity correlated much better with the higher chlorinated congeners. And we attribute that from primarily food consumption uh, that is contaminated with PCBs.